Game two between Fisheye and Etric. Etric taking game one, honestly, through some creativity, I think, with that proxy. Speaking of proxies, for the Twitch audience, I have just, because I did these a little bit out of order, for the Twitch audience, I actually just casted Jesse's match versus Zamu. And a little tidbit that came out of that <laughs> is after that match, Zamu laddered for a week under the uh, name Tilted by Proxy. So definitely tilted in the previous match, which is understandable. StarCraft is a tilting game. This is Polypoid, upper right-hand corner we have Fisheye, the German Protoss in red, bottom right-hand corner we have Etric as the... I like that color for Terran. It's very fetching. Kind of tealish Zerg. It's very... yeah, I like that. It makes the SCV look very stylish. They just feel like a little bit more peppy, don't they? It's like, yes, we are wearing the green. We feel very proud of the job we're doing, etc, etc. Anyway, this is on Polypoid. Etric showing that... has the creativity to fight again. Honestly, I haven't seen a Terran do proxy barracks in a very long period of time. I like seeing it. Going for a Supply Depot. This is a little bit risky. Again, going for the Supply Depot alongside the Geyser. I wonder if this is actually a gap. I'll have to check this, but as far as block mechanics, I think a Marine will be able to fit through here and a Zealot won't. I actually, looking at the map, I'm there, out there, there is a grid that shows uh, essentially building blockade placements as far as what's a solid block and what's not. But I don't know that a geyser, as far as the pixel lengths, is on that metric. And I'll, I'll try, if I remember, I've got a bunch of games i got to list and sort out. If I remember, I'll, I'll place that down. But we see a very quick refinery to, I assume, get a... I, I, I almost assume, looking at this build, that we're going to see a two-factory opener. A very quick two-factory opener. Opposite side of the map, we have a gateway... In a simulator. It is possible that we're just going to see one fact into expansion. SCV Scout making their way across. This is a four-player map, so creative builds like this do have opportunities. And are we going to see a cross scout? Looks like we are going to see a cross map scout, just in case. Well, maybe. I take it back. Uh, yeah, sorry. Just going left. This is normal. It just looked that way briefly. It was like, uh, no, just kidding. Angling to the left. Both players going to come across each other's base. Last, Fisheye scouting Wittershins, like saying that word now. Cybernetics core up, skipping the Zealot. Actually should be able to get that Dragoon out to go ahead and put Etric in the dark, at least initially. Initial Marines being produced. Only, I take it back, one SCV on gas, which suggests we're just going to see one factory into expand for Etric. And we might even see a quick bunker to try to provide some, yeah. Try to, uh, try to create a little bit of space to get a little bit of an earlier command center. So we might even see command center before that factory, maybe, depending on the scouting information that comes out. We are going to see a full complement of... Actually, sorry, three Marines. Just three Marines being produced, the barracks being lifted off, and that plopped down. Neither player has any clue what their opponent's doing. It looks like Fisheye is going to opt for one gate into expand. And the Dragoon pressing forward, I think realizing that scout also coming late, so wants to try to catch this SCV as it's coming up this ramp. So nice kind of heads-up thing. And actually, Etric doing kind of a similar maneuver. And might catch... Yeah, it's going to catch this probe. That's actually huge. So not going to see that bunker. So doesn't know what's happening there. And the SCV not getting blockaded or killed by that Dragoon. Is that probe going to be in line to go ahead and block... It could, does block the ramp, but still lets the SCV in. So going to see the one gate... Second gate warping in, cybernetic core spinning, and get all of the information inside this base. Plus, got the Nexus. So, big informational advantage for Etric. And that's going to, yeah, command center before factory. Second factory to follow, it looks like. Interesting. Maybe? I think that SCV's setting up to go ahead and do a second factory to follow. Probe killed, but got a spot on that command center. I think we're going to see a Vulture follow-up from those two command centers. Realizing that Fisheye is in more of a defensive stance going that one gate. That keeps the Dragoon count low early. Allows you a little bit more space to be aggressive. Because you don't need that. Sometimes you can get away with mines not having that tank. We'll see though. It is possible we'll still just see Machine Shop into tank and then a follow-up from there. Uh, with some Vulture, something along those lines. I like Etric's play thus far, though. Two SCVs on the front, just in case some Dragoons are making their ways down, but those Dragoons are sitting at home base in a defensive posture. 
Another SCV kind of wandering across the map just in case there is proxy tech. Like that for the scouting information. These feel like there's a couple idle SCV though, which are slowing Etrix economy down. We do see the three SCV back into gas, and we are seeing a tank first. Second machine shot plop down. So I think we're going to see an initial tank, but yeah, we already see that vulture speed being upgraded. So initial tank, but then some vultures to do some harassment to pin, to, to provide a little bit of map control, get those mines out on the map, play the game from there. And also, I think Etric is assuming that Fisheye is going to go for more of an aggressive economic play. SCV actually able to get pretty far in, getting a good look at the Dragoon count. I'm almost wondering if that's going to provoke a second tank. Yeah, it does provoke a second tank. As far as the flat Dragoon count. Because the possibility here was is that Fisheye might cut Dragoons, go for a quick third, and actually already setting up along that third base. But Etric, with the mine and vulture speed upgrade, with the Dragoon count somewhat smaller, first of all, might be able to plop down a lot of mines to get a little bit of map control to get a quick third himself. But otherwise might be able to put on some pressure against kind of a thin Dragoon force trying to defend quick three bases. Pylons being plopped down to try to mitigate any sort of movement along those lines. We do see observers being produced as well. Three tanks on the front. It's also possible that we're going to see kind of a follow-up timing off two bases. Potentially. Academy being built. Engineering Bay is up to deal with anything along those lines. And we'll see. Uh, siege tech is not yet upgraded, but it is possible we'll see siege tech kind of once this finished, like siege tech on the way, and a push out from there. Yeah, and we are seeing the lift off, so it's going to be. We'll see if they start moving out momentarily. So we got vulture mines, four marines, three siege tanks, four vultures, and we'll wait for the siege tech to follow. I kind of like it, honestly. Uh, I kind of prefer just the vultures meandering out and kind of defensive things along those lines, but. Etric pressing forward, the Observer does see it on the low ground. Siege tech being upgraded. More siege tanks being built to follow this up. So I'm almost wondering if this is like a potential fake? I don't know. Yeah, backing off with this. Seeing that Observer overhead. Now the Vulture's starting to meander out. So I think Etric is positioning to go ahead and potentially take a third. More siege tanks moving up. Now the Vulture is wandering in. Dragoons engaging. Not catching any probes there. But still able to, yeah, do exactly that. Plant some, plant those mines. Etric should be able to take a third. Because here's the thing. Yeah, these Dragoons might be able to wander down. But they're going to be wandering into potentially mines that are going to slow them down. That's going to allow more Siege Tanks at the close position to go ahead and, and press forward. But on top of that, as soon as they wander out, these Vultures can just do what Vultures do. Plop down and start feasting on probes. Preventatory, pre preventative bunker going down. Is that actually blockading the command center positioning? Almost looks like it is. Maybe not. Missile turret being plopped down there as well. I'm curious about this. Whether the command center slots... This is my lack of ladder play knowing. Additional command center being built very protectively. This actually surprises me a little bit considering the siege tank positioning. That it's being built in base. So Edric playing a little bit more defensively in that regard. Starport is up. Level 1 weapons way on the way. Fisheye sitting at three bases is actually in exactly where you want to be as a Protoss. Has really been able to push things economically, mitigate any sort of uh, vulture harass, and is up to five gateways, good supply count, good probe count, and is honestly just at this stage just out macroing Etric. Also has that observer that's been able to see absolutely everything. Science facility, their starport, I assume to go for a dropship with these vultures to follow. And Fisheye going to go ahead and plop to go ahead and try to take a fourth base. So rather than getting aggressive, rather than going for... I think this this shuttle is mostly there to deal with any sort of siege tank pushes. Although not necessary because this is... What, we're at the nine minute mark and this is still just two factories producing siege tanks at this stage. Now we see three more factories being plopped down to produce additional vultures. But Fisheye, with this, with that uh, potential dropship out there. So the bunker being, yeah, okay. The bunker being wiped out because that was blockading. Now the, the command center floating out. But here's the thing. Fisher already has that fourth base on the way in a decent economic position. These Dragoons have managed to clear out mines fairly effectively across this map. These pylon will help mitigate and that can will help mitigate uh, something along those lines. So I'm kind of, again, I'm curious about this control tower. 
Feels like it was built, but isn't being utilized just yet. Another CompSat station in play. There's a large amount of siege tanks. Those two machine shops have been just producing non-stop siege tanks in the mid-game. Level 2 weapons, level 1 armor on the way. And I'm wondering if Edric's going to go for that typical timing. Here's the thing, though. I think Fisheye is in... Well, I take it back. I was going to say strong positioning to deal with that. However, at 137 supply. But 73 probes. So half that. So 70 supply, effectively, of attack units. Potentially can still fight it back with some, some decent army positioning. But in a little bit of a quandary... because kind of moving out, taking a lot of map positioning. So going for additional bases, but these vultures still might be able to sneak out against a thin dragoon, a thin and wandering dragoon count and push things up. So able to pick up a probe right there. Is going to see that base at the very least. Looked like Fisheye's doing a nice defensive job catching those vultures before they're really able to accomplish anything. But we are moving towards that level 2 weapons upgrade moment. Or sorry, this is going to be level... I'm off. That's... Uh, Wow, this is a late level 1 weapons upgrade. Maybe because of the Vulture. I thought that was like level 2 on the way. That's how off I was on it. So level 1 weapons kicking in. Vulture's able to get, looks like, two probes. But honestly, Fisheye's still in fantastic position with... I mean, he just has, honestly, too many probes, I think, for this stage of the match. Level 1 weapons kicking, level 2 on the way. That's going to put it, I think, around like the 1430 mark for an attack. And honestly, at that stage... I expect uh, a lot of gateways, a lot of tech. We already have the Arbiter making the way, so I think Fisheye is going to be in position to go ahead and deal with that without too much trouble. We'll see. Already wandering out. I expect, yeah, additional bases. Yeah, there's, I think, that probe getting blocked by the own, their own Dragoons. I'm expecting a probe to start wandering out to go ahead and take additional bases here in the upper left. And I'm looking also for Fisheye to start pressing forward to go ahead and start boxing Etric in a little bit. And play map control in that regard. Keep those vultures pinned into the base. This is a lot of gateways. Plopping it out. So that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 gateways. 13. 13 gateways. So it's definitely going to be gateway man with a thinner arbiter count. This observer has just been amazing with the information it's getting. We do see a bunch of additional factories being plopped down now for Etric as well. Level 1 armor is kicking in. And it looks like I think Etric is starting to position a little bit. And plopping things down to go ahead and start maybe even moving across the map before that level 2 weapons has kicked in. Perhaps before the time. It looks like Fisheye repositioning the Dragoons and Zealots to midfield to go ahead and engage. Catching a couple of mines along the way. We heard those. Fisheye is now establishing that upper right hand base. A lot of mines placed to the north for Etric, but I think... I assume those are just defensive mines. Waiting for those tanks to unseize. We do have a science vessel overhead. We do have a couple glyphs to deal with potential problems with arbiters. One arbiter should already be out here someplace. Another arbiter is on the way. Looking for that arbiter on the map. There's the arbiter. Midfield. And Etric setting up to go ahead and take the 6 o'clock base. And Fisheye positioning as though there's go there is going to be an attack there. Fisheye has good eyes on army and positioning here. This is a ramp to go up to go ahead and deal with this. But here's the thing. And at 200 supply, so it needs to start doing something here. Ooh, man, that turret does not want to get taken care of. Zealot shuttles look like they are going to be able to get to that back siege tank line. A lot of vultures picking them off, but that's going to prevent a few shots. But Fisheye, because of this gap, not able to climb up. A bunch of siege tanks already there. The Goliath is going to be able to push that shuttle back. And not a favorable engagement, so really nothing disrupted. And going to have to back off from there. Etric, honestly, is happy. So even though Fisheye has a huge economic lead, is going to probably max out to 200 and have a big supply. Etric is kind of playing the I'm happy to be Terran and sit back and get a bunch of upgrades and play the game from here. Like, you got to come to me. I'm just going to have my big beefy army and press out, and you got to stop me. Level 2 weapons kicking up. Now starting to press towards that natural expansion. Fisheye's army a bit silent in the middle of the map. Just now starting to reposition. The natural expansion doesn't have a lot of defense in position. Now sieging up as they're coming across that back line. Those siege tanks are exposed. Zealot's a little bit lagging though. Not able to quite get on top of those siege tanks. No stasis just yet. An EMP just in case 
uh, that, oh sorry, the EMP did not land. There was a stasis on the, the back corner. So while that attack line was spread out, Fisheye Fish able to just jump on top of it with a nice stasis on that back line tank and crushing that army. Beautiful engagement. And the rest of the siege tanks getting cleaned out from above. So Etric just not keeping army cohesion, sieging up in a line, just sieging up and getting jumped right on top of at kind of a picture perfect engagement point from Fisheye. Fisheye continuing to press this forward. Could probably back off at this stage, but going to expend every last unit, it looks like. He is in gateway man mode, so can refill his army very rapidly. Arbiter's still up in the air. Those mines being dragged straight into the siege tanks at that third, and it looks like how many units are even left? Okay, so we got three siege tanks that are going to be cleaned up momentarily. More vultures starting to wander out. Another round of siege tanks below, but that's like, what, five siege tanks remaining? That probe even getting in the action. Probe's like, I'm going to... I got to get some glory here. Going to get some kills. Vultures mining this corner of the map, providing, I don't know, some semblance of map control, I assume just to deal with any sort of, so Fisheye setting up for Gorilla Toss already. Has some gateways in this upper left-hand corner. The Vultures might be able to peek through there and get something accomplished. Probes being spotted, wandering cross map. It looks like they're going to go bottom left. That isn't well defended just yet, so the Vultures are going to get some kills here. So small victories here. That is going to drop the probe count. Ooh. That is a bit frustrating, because that means this Nexus isn't going to come up online. Ooh, an entire round of probes, honestly. Entire base worth, so 58. So big win, actually, there for Etric. For not a lot. That was, what, six vultures able to just deal with all of that. Zealots wandering across the middle of the map going to eat a lot of mines here. <clears throat> There's that probe again. Hero probe. It's like, I'm a fighter now. I got this gas. I can explode on anybody. More Arbiters in the air. Recall is being upgraded. I feel like that is the right call against a Terran that's kind of shelling up on four bases. You need to get a good solid... You need to get some good solid stasis. Good. Basically, you need to recall, get on top of the factories in the main, pin them back, uh, starve them out. Looks like some vultures were able to sneak up in this upper left. A lot of cannons being placed there otherwise. Fisheye still... I'm not going to say has an... Ooh, maybe a recall? Arbiter's there, but no recall to follow. Waiting for an EMP. EMP does clear that out. Now, okay, recall last second before that EMP lands. Zealots able to get on top of that siege tanks. And it looks like it was just pure... Okay, one Dragoon and pure Zealots otherwise. The Zealots able to wipe the siege tank out, but... And there's that Battle Probe. Get him, Battle Probe! Gonna be able to clear out this 6 o'clock. More siege tanks moving in, but not before a lot the SCV count. Strike for strike, more SCVs being wiped out. And the Arbiter is still able to get some uh, additional SCV kills. That Hero Probe dead. Another Arbiter in position to go for a recall towards the main now that that army's out of position. Here's the thing. Mech is slow. It's moving in. There are no... There's one turret to the right. Another big recall. EMP completely misses everything. And now on top of that factory line. The question is, is can these LTF yeah, power down some of these factories, get some of this tech down? While this army retreats, and usually, yeah, you get this drop, you got to do stuff other places. On top of everything else, another battle probe. Love it. Get that action probes. Some more SCVs being wiped out here in the main, but this base is thin. And that's going to again force all of the reinforcements, this very slow mech army, back to the main. And that's going to allow more reinforcements to maybe push forward and establish another location. Another drop moving up. It's going to be relentless. We do have two starports. Looks like level two armor. Level 1 armor going to be coming online. So another drop being round up right on top of the 6. And with that army completely out of position, it's just like back and forth. It's like a game of ping pong, but with recall and arbiters. Tanks trying to siege on the low ground. That command center being lifted off. That's going to get taken out. Now Etric is in trouble. In a lot of trouble. His mains mined out. His natural expansions mined out. This was a base he needed. And it is gone. Only mining it is mineral only. In the meantime, Fisheye is sitting at natural, still mining barely. So let's call that half a base. Mining at one, two, three. So three and a half. And setting up to go ahead and take a fourth. Still sitting at 150 supply. Has an okay bank. Not kind of the bank you want for this sort of situation. But needs to move up. And yeah, I think he realizes the situation. Needs to just go and go for a kill. Edric has some units. Or sorry, Fisheye has some units to go ahead and engage that. This is really textbook Protoss. But here's the thing, Fisheye needs to... Looks like some... I don't... Was that a recall? 
think that might have been a recall. Moving up to that 3 o'clock, going ahead and wiping some units out. I don't think that was a recall. I think the units might have just walked there. Siege tank's moving up. Another recall is going to come in momentarily. Arbiter doesn't quite have enough energy. But, honestly, this is not a time for recalls anymore. Recall on the bottom right-hand corner, but the units are not out of position to help deal with the attack force that's pushing down on the natural expansion. Critically, though, even if Etric takes out this natural expansion and pushes into the main, there's more bases where Fisheye can rebuild. Fisheye working on that armory. I don't think that's upgrade. It is upgrading armor 3. So picking those off and actually stopping armor 3 from getting up would be huge. Looks like that is going to be accomplished. Now can start focusing on maybe defending that natural expansion. Does have some cloak there. Some zealots clearing the mines along that way. 3 o'clock base. Let's see if those units rejoin the fray. Good stasis on that back line to kind of split that army up. Dragoons able to get on top of those initial siege tanks, but unfortunately getting killed by that back siege tank line pretty rapidly. And I think Fisheye's done it. Sitting at 188 supply versus 75. More zealots pouring in. And more units, yeah, peeling in from that 3 o'clock location to go ahead and clean this army up. I'm expecting a GG momentarily. From Etric. Etric in desperate situation. There's GG. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Well, I gotta say, that was very impressive play from Fisheye. That's really what you... As far as, like, Protoss taking on Terran in a long-term... Sort of macro play. As, uh, like, textbook, what you should do. I feel like this was it. Like, this is the replay I want to, like, say, like, hey, everybody at CPL, check out what Fish I did to Etric here in this game as far as, like, what you really want to do uh, as far as, like, optimal play against a, a Terran opponent. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll move on to game three between Etric and Fish I.